If you're a creative artist, graphic designer, photographer, or someone who works in video, you know how important it is to make sure that you get the very best color and detail out of the things that you're making. The problem is how do you make sure that you keep all of that detail across technology and make sure that it looks the same? The entire process always seemed complicated and many people just don't do it because they fear that it's too technical. This series has tackled some essential parts of color management quickly and painlessly, but there is so much more that you can learn and do. For example, in the monitor calibration lesson, we talked about how each monitor has a capacity of producing specific colors and we used the number of crayons to show that. We called this a color gamut, the limiter of colors that can be produced. If we took those colors in the crayon pack and laid them side by side, they'd probably look like this. That shows us a good representation of colors, but it really only shows us the hues that we use, right? We know that colors can exist that are brighter and darker than each of these hues. So your color gamut really just doesn't go from left to right, but also up and down and even towards you or away from you. It's more three-dimensional. I'm using the Color Sync Utility on the Mac to show you this color representation. What we haven't talked about is that just like there are gamuts that your monitor can produce, there are also established color gamuts of color that the industry generally uses. The most popular are sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Profoto. Video editors are now using a color profile called Rec 709 for their work. There are all just ranges of colors and knowing how your monitor and printer behave in respect to these standards will let you make better decisions for how you shoot, for how you process, and how you share. For example, look at how much color in the Adobe RGB space passes the capability of the color in this specific paper. Any color that sits in the outside part of this range would have to be converted to a color that falls within the capacity of the paper. Probably good information for you to know before you select the image for the printer, but it's all just gamut. It's a 3D exploded view of crayons, and the i1 Studio measures all of this perfectly. Or, what happens when your images move past the printer and now need to be shown on a projector? The entire process of calibration not only works on your monitor and your mobile devices, but you can also calibrate projectors and scanners. You even have the option to take the profile that you've made and make it even more precise using profile optimization. Imagine if you need to make sure that the profile that you made works exactly for a specific image. Wouldn't it be a great idea for you to optimize that print profile to ensure that those colors are perfectly tuned? In the optimization panel, you can load the printer profile that you made and load the sample picture. This will let you create a series of reference patches that you can then scan just like you did with the original profile. You can now name this optimized profile and it's ready to go. The profile is not only tuned to the industry standards for the monitor and the print, but the exact picture that you need to print. X-Rite i1 Studio is designed to make sure that you're covered as your needs grow, but easy enough to get you right in the game to make sure that you are making the best pictures possible. If you want to learn more, make sure that you visit xrightphoto.com. My name is RC. Thanks for watching.